What is happening, boys and girls? Jim here, RCAD, working on the uh, Hoina, Wina, Huina, Wina. <laughs> I always mess up on the name. If anybody knows how to pronounce it, man, you're a better person than I am. Uh, Huina 1550 excavator, working on this. Question of the day Can you put different attachments onto the Hoina 1550 excavator, such as things for the 580 excavator, ripper claw, timber grabber, drill, or jackhammer? Larger all metal yellow bucket. 580 bucket. Can you put any of this stuff on a 1550 without any modifications? Well, let's take a look at it here real quick. Stock 1550. Stock 1550. This is not a stock 1550. Stock one has your little gear driven units in here, which look like this. This little guy right here is what drives your stock buckets on a 1550. Gear driven. This little motor sits right down in here in the arm, just like so. And then there's a little gear like this guy right here. It fits onto this squared off screw, it has four square edges on it. And that little gear sits right here in the middle. So this little square peg goes right through the gear. Your servo, which sits up in top, rides in it just like that. And that is what actuates your bucket up and down. So we all got that. So a little mental note. Stock 1550 excavator, you might not want to use this bucket. It might be a little bit too much for that gear system. I'm pretty sure it would be too much for that gear system. If you have an upgraded 1550 with a worm gear, screw driven servos on here, then no big deal because you're not using this to move your bucket. You're using the screw driven servo and our linkages here to move your bucket in and out. Mosquito. <laughs> so, uh, nevertheless, if you're going to be using uh, your stock gear driven 1550, the bucket might not be the best idea just because you might not have enough power or strength inside this little gear driven setup to actuate the buckets. Looking at our timber grabber, this part here would probably work just fine with your 1550. Once again, you're going to be using that same gear driven setup with our gear in the middle. It's going to be sitting on that square shaft, so it's going to be actuated in the same fashion. Just a matter of whether or not it will hook up. So let's take this apart and see if any of this stuff here will fit onto a 1550. Got a screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, cross wrench, box wrench. Top screw is uh, squared off. It fits into a squared slot, so it's not going anywhere. Stock screw, shaft, once again, square edges on it. Removing the linkage. That's mosquitoes, I tell you. No real need for a box wrench on this one either, just because the nut on the back edge of the bucket sits into a little detent and keeps it held in place. So there is our bottom screw or pin, which is completely smooth. Camera not focusing in on, I apologize. Nut fits into this little recessed area right there. So once again, don't necessarily need a wrench for that, just need a screwdriver to undo it. So there we go, our stock bucket is disconnected. Before we put it off to the side, let's do some comparisons. Yellow bucket versus the stock 1550 bucket. So it gives you an idea on overall size. Yellow bucket versus the stock 1550 bucket. 1580 bucket. There you go again. 1580 bucket. A little bit larger than the yellow bucket. In case you haven't seen my video on the 1580 and the bucket and whatnot, here we go, look at them side by side. On the yellow bucket versus the 580 bucket. 580 buckets wider across the opening. They have the same depth as far as how deep they are. This one appears to be a little bit deeper, but that's an optical illusion just because the 580 has a radius edge right here and this one is squared off. So this one appears to be deeper, but in all reality, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, they are the exact same depth. 
Yellow bucket is just a little bit wider, a couple millimeters right here at the entrance going up and down. But the 1550 is wider across the mouth. All right, which bucket holds more between all of our buckets here? We've got the 1550 bucket, optional 580 bucket, and our 580 bucket. So we've got a scale out here, a ratio right cup. And I've got a bucket of sand down yonder, some fine beach sand. We got a nice level bucket of sand right here. This is the 550 bucket. A little bit of dust coming off of it. We are at 267.6 grams. 267.6 grams for the little bucket. 267.6 grams. Upgraded yellow bucket. Nice full bucket, yes. Agreed. Three ninety nine point one. Three hundred ninety nine point one grams. Three nine nine point one for the yellow bucket. Five eighty bucket. Around, making sure it's nice and level. Nice level bucket. Agreed. Three fifty three point five. Three fifty three point five. So there we have it, boys and girls. Yellow bucket is larger than the 580 bucket as far as which one can hold more material. 580 bucket, wider mouth across the front. Yellow bucket, wider up and down. Yes, we can put the yellow bucket inside the 580 bucket. But as we see in here, the yellow bucket still holds more material. 399.1 grams versus 353.5 grams. So, yep. Yellow bucket is slightly bigger. Ever so slightly. All right, can any of this other stuff fit on here? Well, let's go ahead here and try the yellow bucket. And getting our top screw put in place. There we go, she's attached. I'm not gonna bolt it up. We do have it attached right there. Bottom half, negligible, just because this floats, everyone. So it doesn't really matter what our total length is from here to here, because this floats. So that's going to connect regardless. There we go. Yellow bucket fits on the 1550. Bucket out. Bucket in. Nice good curl on it. We're making contact with our servo there. Boom arm raised all the way up. Nice curl on that bucket with that arm raised all the way up. Definitely getting a good curl there. So yellow bucket works fine on the 1550. There we go with that one. All right, let's move on to the next attachment. Obviously, we should have no problems with any of these attachments. Once again, just because that bottom connection is floating. So it doesn't matter what you put up there. So the drill would work on here as well, the impact. Just because you're using your stock points right here and this one is floating, so it doesn't matter where it goes. So this would work on your 1550 if you had a plug to plug this into. It does have the socket in the main arm. It does have an open socket there, uh, but there's no hardware going to it, no electricity going to it, so nothing to plug this into. But yes, this will fit on the 1550. 580 bucket. 580 bucket should work as well, once again, just because we've got the same spread going across. This is adjustable, doesn't matter where it's sitting at. Using our factory squared off screw for the top screw, once again, especially if you're using your gear drive system in there. 
you're going to want to use this. If you're using the worm gear screws, then you can just put a regular M3 through here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you're still using that factory gear in there, you're going to need to use that square shaft to hold everything back together. Smooth shaft back on the bottom again. Obviously works, no problem. We can go through the motions for craps and giggles. There we go, all curled up. Coming into contact with our servo. Nice full curl on it. No problems right there. Bucket works great. Everything works fine. So yes, you can use a 1580 bucket on your 1550. Nice healthy scoop on that girl too. So that's cool, that'll work. No complaints about that. 1580 bucket goes right on there. All right, so it stands to reason that our ripper fork will work on here. All our other attachments will work on here as well. As far as what to use and what not to use, if you have your worm gear aftermarket servos on here, then yeah, you can use the big bucket, you can use the ripper fork, you can use a timber grabber, you can use the yellow bucket, everything but the jackhammer. Once again, unless you have it plumbed for power so you can power the jackhammer. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use that. You can fit it on there, just won't be able to plug it in. Everything else will work fine if you're using your worm gear servos. If you're still using that gear-driven setup with your little sprocket here, and your little gear driven servo on the inside. If you're using that setup, I wouldn't recommend a 580 bucket because you're probably going to overload that system. I wouldn't recommend the yellow bucket because you're probably going to overload the system. It will go on there, it will work. I don't think I would necessarily use the ripper fork once again because you're probably going to do damage uh, to the stock system here. But timber grabber, you would have no problem. Timber grabber would work fine. So, timber grabber with your gear stock setup in here, no problem. Everything else, uh, it'll work. It'll go on there. <laughs> but uh, I don't think this is going to be able to handle the stress of moving these heavier parts around. So that's going to do it, everyone. Very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. As always, questions and comments are always welcome. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.